When somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! You know, some owner's going to do that. He's going to say, that guy that disrespects our flag, he's fired. And that owner, they don't know it. They don't know it. They're friends of mine, many of them. They don't know it. They'll be the most popular person for a week. They'll be the most popular person in this country, because that's a total disrespect of our heritage. That's a total disrespect of everything that we stand for, OK? everything that we stand for. And I know we have freedoms, and we have freedom of choice, and many, many different freedoms. But you know what? It's still totally disrespectful. And you know, when the NFL ratings are down massively, massively, the NFL ratings are down massively. Now, the number one reason happens to be that they like watching what's happening on, you know, with your spirit. Shalom, family. It's your brother, Priest Daniela, Lions of Israel, Maccabees Alliance Council. I wanted to talk to y'all about the importance of that statement that you just watched, that who I call Dumb Donald, a.k.a. 45, a.k.a. so-called president, but actually a puppet, Donald Trump, made concerning Colin Kaepernick and the NFL players that are kneeling in protest of police brutality. I want to show y'all why that's important. We're going to go on a little journey historically and go back a little bit about maybe 20, 25 years and bring everything up to date, maybe about 30 years and bring everything up to date as to why that statement is very important. Let's go back a little bit. Some of you brothers and sisters are really young, so you didn't grow up watching certain TV shows like What's Happening. Um, you didn't grow up watching stuff like Sanford and Son. You didn't grow up watching stuff like Good Times. So let me educate you a little bit. Let's go back to what's happening. Maybe you didn't watch that, but your parents watched that show. There was an actress on What's Happening called Maybelline King, right? Or Mabel King. And she was the mother figure on What's Happening. And her role was that she was a maid. That was her role. She was a maid and she was a single mother 
raising two children, right? So the first two seasons, she went along with the plot of the story, of the show, right? Now, the writers of the show and the producers of the show were so-called Jews, right? So right around the time when season three was about to be filmed, she went to the producers and she said, look, you know, I'm tired of being a, um, a maid on the show. Like, let's put out a positive image of black people. Let's show black people that you can actually elevate from being just a maid and actually be something. Why don't y'all write into the show and make it so that I'm going back to school to get a college education and get a better job? What happened to Maybelline, Mabel, Ephraim, Mabel King? What happened to Mabel King? She was written off the show, what's happening? They wrote her behind out, rather than show an image of a positive black, so-called black woman as a role model to her children. Let's go a step further. Everybody remembers good times. It's on TV land, it shows on TV land all the time. Everybody remembers good times, right? You had the strong black father, James Evans. You had the mother, Florida Evans, and you had the three children. Season one, you had Michael, the young black prodigy, Right? He was strong. He was militant. He spoke about the black Christ. He was eloquent. All that stuff, right? So you had a strong black family with a mother and a father. That went along for three seasons. Around season four, okay, you had, uh, I believe the brother's name is John Amos. He went to the producers. He's like, look, I don't like the way that this show is going. After season one and two, Michael, who was strong, intelligent, militant, and black and strong, what did they do to him? They started writing him less and less in the show. And who started getting to be more in the forefront of the show? JJ, right? The clown, the buffoon, dynamite, all that other stuff. So John Amos went to the producers and they was like, listen, you know, I don't like the direction the show was going. Like, let's put, portray a more positive uh, image for the show. What happened to John Amos? Remember that episode? Flora Evans was like, damn, damn, damn. They wrote his behind right out the show and got him out of there. And who were the producers of the show? so-called white Jews, so-called white people, because they didn't want black people having that strong image of black people. Okay? Let's take it to Sanford and Son, Red Fox. Remember that? Remember they wrote Red Fox out of his show, Sanford and Son, and they made Grady, uh, they gave him a bigger role in the show? Why was that? Because Red Fox complained to the so-called Jews who were the writers and the producers that he didn't like the direction of the show. What is all this that I'm saying to you, family? What I'm trying to say to you is that what Hollywood does is that when you are a so-called black man or a black woman in a position of influence amongst your people and you stand up for your people, they make examples out of you. This is not new. This is old. Let us not remember. Let's, let's, let us not forget Craig Hodges of the Chicago Bulls. Remember him? My uncles, they all taught me about the conscious athletes of that time. Jim Browns, Muhammad Ali's, Luel Sendors, Kurt Floods, guys that I look to as, as far as being able to balance consciousness and balance their sport. What we're really talking about is refusing to separate athletic excellence with moral excellence. People can't help but respect somebody who puts themselves out there in front of the whole world. Uh, cameras, you know, the game's on the line. So when they then put themselves on the line, for a cause, it just, it just is arresting. The history of your country politically can't be told without telling the history of the country athletically. When you think about Hodge going to the White House wearing a dashiki. When I go to a royal occasion, I should dress in my royalty garment. Bush was cool to me when I got to the White House. That's an awesome garment. And handing Bush a letter about every problem in the country. When you meet the president, you can't, you can't give him anything. So in proper protocol, I gave it to his press secretary. That takes a lot of integrity. Most people, when they get to the White House, they're not thinking about the whole world and how they can make a difference. I didn't ever think that me going to the White House, asking President Bush to consider the issues of black people would cost me 40 to $50 million. I'm leading the league in three-point percentage. I'm a two-time world champion. I'm a three-point shooting champion three times in a row. And can't nobody use my services? Remember that when he went to the White House after winning two championships, after leading the league in three-point percentages, he went to the White House in 92, during the time when Bush was in office, and spoke to Bush about atrocities that were happen, happening to black people. What happened to Craig Hodges in the NBA? He was blackballed and blacklisted, and what happened to his career? It was over. It was over. And Michael Jordan never supported him. All right? What about 
uh, what is his name? His name's Steven Jackson, a.k.a. Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. Remember him? He played for the Denver Nuggets sometime around 1996. And he refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. What happened to Mahmoud Abdul Raouf? He was blacklisted out of the NBA and never played again. Okay? It was never the same again after that. He was so we have many, many, many examples of entertainers, celebrities, sport figures standing up for their people and they're always made examples out of it. Even Muhammad Ali, when he refused to go and fight in the Vietnam War, everybody knows what happened to him. Do your history. So what does all this have to do with what Donald Trump said about Colin Kaepernick? This all goes back to slavery, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. This all goes back to slavery. What do I mean by that? During slavery, when a slave got out of line, what did master do? Master would bring that slave in front of the whole plantation, in front of all the blacks, and would whip his back. What did that do? That put a sense of fear in the other slaves that, guess what? If you get out of line and get out your place, you could get what he's getting. So all the other slaves, they stayed in their place and they stayed in line. This is a modern day whipping that is happening in the Colin Kaepernick, nothing more and nothing less. And it's very important. A lot of people say, well, who gives a damn about the NFL? Who gives a damn about athletes? We don't care about that. A lot of Israelites say that, and you're wrong. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong about saying that. We care because a man like Colin Kaepernick, who has millions and millions and millions of followers on Twitter and on Instagram and other social media sites, could you imagine... How many people his message is reaching? How many people did Kendrick Lamar reach with just saying a line, don't call me black no more, I'm Israel. Kendrick Lamar has millions and millions and millions of followers on social media, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Okay? So they, they don't want certain messages getting out to the people. This is not like the past. Now, you don't, you don't even need to depend on the news cycles or the news stations to get your message out. You could take your message directly to millions and millions and millions of people via social media. So they don't want certain people getting out of line. Okay? So now you have Colin Kaepernick and he has his protest against police brutality and the murders of unarmed so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men and women. And what has the media done? The media has taken his protest and transformed it from his intent which is police brutality, until now it is an argument over whether or not you should stand or salute that crap, that garbage that they call a flag. That so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American people are going overseas and fighting in the military of this country and coming back and being told that they don't have a right to protest. We're giving our lives for this false, phony country too and being told that we cannot protest. That we don't have a right to protest and stand up for our rights. That's what we're being told. This is bigger than just Colin Kaepernick. The media has taken his message and swept it under the rug. And now Donald Trump called him a son of a bitch for standing up for dead black people. That that flag is more important than the blood that is still crying out from the streets of brothers like Sean Bell. And brothers like Eric Garner. Okay? And, and many, many others, Jose Garcia, okay? And many, many, many others that were killed, unarmed by the police, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Latasha Harlins, okay? Uh, uh, Orlando Castillo in Oakland, Philando Castillo, excuse me, in Oakland, and many others that were murdered, unarmed, and got no justice. And he stood up for that. Or I should say he knelt, he knelt down for that. And now he's the enemy. Meanwhile, you got guys like Jim Brown riding a coon train. Michael Vick riding a coon train. Stephen A. Smith riding a coon train. Chris Carter riding a coon train. Steve Harvey, Kanye West, Omarosa. Okay? And the list goes on. Let me get some others. I won't leave nobody out. I don't want to discriminate. Let's get some others. Let's get some others. Okay, um, Sheriff David Clark, okay, Snoop Dogg, Ray Lewis, can't forget him, he's super cool, with a cape, okay, Reverend Daryl Scott, and many, many, many others riding that daggone coon train, 
Now it's become all about the flag and not about the blood of so-called blacks and Hispanics that have been killed in this country. That's what's happening. And we're being told by the NFL that we don't have a right to protest. That we don't have a right to stand up. What does all that mean, Brother Daniela? What does all that mean? Why is all this important? I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show you how this affects us, right? We're going to go to the Bible. We're going to go to the book of St. John, chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 45 to 48. And I'm going to show you how it's relevant to today. All right? Watch this. St. John, chapter 11, verse 45. Whether or not you believe in the New Testament, there's still wisdom in here that you can take. So take the wisdom. Then many of the Jews, which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahweh Shai did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them the things that Yahweh Shai had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. So the Pharisees, which were Israelites, were given, not all the Pharisees, but the rulers of the Pharisees, were given their positions by the Romans. And they were more concerned with holding on to their positions than they were about their people. That's who guys like Ray Lewis are. That's who guys like Chris Carter is. That's who guys like Kanye West and, 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 and Sheriff David Clark and Steve Harvey and the rest of these dudes riding on the coon train are. That's who they are. They're more concerned about the positions the white man gave them than they are about their people. And what Donald Trump is doing and what the media is doing is they're doing what is called a modern day whipping on, Kanye, uh, on Colin Kaepernick. They're showing so-called blacks and Hispanics that if you get out of line, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much fame you have. We're going to do the same thing that we did to Craig Hodges to you. We're going to do the same thing that we did to Mahmoud Abdul Rauf to you. We're going to do the same thing that we did to Colin Kaepernick to you. Colin Kaepernick is more talented than a starter for the New York Jets. He's more talented than a starter for the Miami Dolphins and a whole bunch of other players that are starting on different NFL rosters right now. But because he stood up for his people, he has no job. They're making examples out of him. And the ultimate picture, the ultimate point that I want to get across to everybody is this, right? When you have people that have that type of platform, right? I'm only, I'm, my, my voice can only go but so far. General Hashar's voice can only go but so far. Okay, Asha Asha Allah's voice can only go but so far. We're only going to reach but so many people. But when you have somebody like Kendrick Lamar on that level, that has millions and millions and millions of followers, and he comes out and says, don't call me black no more, I'm an Israelite. Now he has a platform to reach a lot of people that I can't and bring them in this direction towards this truth. They're trying to squash and stamp that out. That's why they're making examples of anybody that speaks against this country. This is bigger than that. This is bigger than that. So this is very, very, very important, and that's why I'm bringing it to you, brothers and sisters. Go back and think about it. How many people came to Islam through Muhammad Ali being a Muslim, being a part of the Nation of Islam, and the heavyweight champion, and one of the most recognizable faces in the world? Do you know how many people joined the Nation of Islam behind that? The so-called white man learned a great lesson through that. And that's why he makes examples out of a lot of celebrities that stand up today to make sure that it doesn't happen on a, a, a larger basis than it happens. So I just wanted to give y'all, brothers and sisters, my commentary on why it's very important what Donald Trump said. What he's doing right now with that statement that he made is he's making sure that that message of truth and empowerment does not reach the masses of our people. And any so-called black athlete or actor that would, think to bring, that would think to bring that message of truth and empowerment to our people, you will be made an example of like Colin Kaepernick if you do what he did. So ladies and gentlemen, the fight is on, man. The fight is on. The so-called white man is showing his horns every day. Pay attention. This is your brother, Priest Daniela, Lines of Israel, Maccabees TV. With that, I say shalom.